Here's the air conditioning valve. I'm not sure exactly what it does. It's got two opposing spring-loaded, looks almost like a large Schrader valve in each one. And um, there's an O-ring here that seals it to this pipe. There's an O-ring right here that seals it to this pipe. And then there's uh, four O-rings internally. One of them you can't buy because it's a square cut O-ring, so you have to hopefully get one that's still good. The other three you can replace. So I rebuilt this one here, the first one I ever rebuilt. It doesn't leak and it works fine. It worked fine and didn't leak in the first place. I just didn't want to screw up my girlfriends, um, so I experimented on mine. That was good. And then it took me forever to get um, to find O-rings. They're tiny, which you'll... Um, I'll take measurements and show you later in the video how what size they are approximately. Okay, now let me go show you her uh, her Jeep. See, this one is in front of the radiator. A lot of them are here. Um, some others are attached to the uh, filter dryer. All right, I'm using a flashlight to to light this uh, this valve up. This is the uh, four liter 88 XJ, and you can see it's attached to the back side of the receiver dryer. But they're exactly the same valve, precisely the same inside and out. This one needs, I pinched the O-ring right where it attaches up in the front by the uh, receiver dryer. You can see the green sticking out a little bit and it leaks there, my, uh, my sniffer tells me. So this one has to come back out and then I get to do it all again. So. Anyway, that's where they are, and as far as I know, this is only on Renix Jeeps, but I do not know that for a fact. And they tend to leak, so um, the most common two places i found is this valve leaking and the main seal on the air on the AC compressor down inside of here. Now that compressor is new, new, so it doesn't leak at all, but that's the two most common places for them to leak. Okay, um, that's it for now. All right, here's some dimensions I want to give you guys so you're you're close if you decide to do this yourself. Okay, so the green O-rings, uh, let's see here. I'll take a dimension and then I'll show it to you. Uh, 163, so... Yeah, that could be a 3 16 ID. Somewhere close to 3 16 ID for the green ones. <clears throat> ah, da, 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 da. Okay. These idiots. Okay. Let's put that on camera a little better now, right? Sorry, the battery's getting low. 184 for the green. Shit, man, come on, here we go, okay. Good old scotch tape. Okay, let's see how close that is to an eighth, 125 or so. Eh. Yeah, it's real close to an eighth inch. It might be a tiny bit under an eighth. ID. On this one the wall is 093. On the green ones the wall is 070. Okay, so there's some dimensions. You heard my comments in the videos. Um, that should be helpful. Um, yeah, so that's it for now. See you bye. This is a valve out of a 88 XJ Cherokee 4 liter. It's free air conditioning. And um, just trying to show it to you here. It's three pieces and then some internal pieces. So what happens is this thing leaks. You'll take your Freon sniffer and you'll sniff it and it'll leak internally. So this goes one of two places. It either goes to the um, 
uh, on our 86 XJ it goes up by the radiator you'll see the high side line go along the front of the radiator and this is in that line or on the 88 uh, the same valve screws into the um, receiver dryer so that's where you'll find this and to take it out you loosen this up like two turns and then you unscrew this end which goes to the receiver dryer then you unscrew this end and the um, the line comes off um, the, the small diameter hard line so that's how you get it out now um, sorry my camera's all backwards um, there's several parts here and there's o-rings that you can replace and actually there's a couple that you can't so let's start with this half um, internally there's a spring-loaded check valve okay there's supposed to be an o-ring on there do I have one with an o-ring on it I do not <clears throat> you need an o-ring that just is a little bigger than than this um, smaller of the two diameters on yeah so it needs to be a little smaller than that diameter so it'll stick out and seal and what happens is it goes in here <clears throat> and it sticks out the top it sticks to about right there and that black thing you see in there is a flat cut o-ring that with time ends up with a little angle on it don't replace it you can't find it not available anywhere so um, leave that o-ring, look at it and see if it's chewed up. If it's not, leave it. Um, I suggest buying a couple of these spare out of the junkyard. They're usually a buck or something. <clears throat> anyway, so this valve comes out and this gets an o-ring on it too. And just behind that black o-ring, there's a tapered brass seat that this o-ring here will seat up against. And so that, this half's pretty easy to rebuild. You just have to put an O-ring on here, and this just falls out. So keep it clean, put an O-ring on it, put it back. Okay, so this half gets put out of the way. This one is a lot more complicated. Um, when it's assembled, here's what it looks like. I don't know if you can see it, there's a tapered... I'll just take it out. See how the front of this is tapered at an angle? That is um, really important because that o-ring I told you that there's no way you'll ever find one. It's square cut. It fits right up against it. They're the same angle. <clears throat> so that's how that those go together. Now this also has its own um, o-ring inside of it, mostly inside of it. Um, ugh, let's see if I can get this to come apart. See that? Ugh. You take a tiny O-ring, like these here, uh, these are probably not an eighth ID, they're probably smaller than that, and you stretch them over a pair of needle nose and then put it over that. Now this will, <clears throat> best case, this thing, the top of this plunger will end up flush like this, but it, it won't. With an O-ring in there it sticks up just a tiny bit. You don't want it sticking out a lot around the edges because you need this tapered seat right here where my fingernail is. You need that clear so it'll, so it'll line up and seat in that guy. Boy, the light is crappy, isn't it? So that's important that these two fit. And there's a way to check that. Uh, let's see, so this one... This one goes in here. A lot of times they're stuck. You can't get this out, a lot of them. You just can't get it out because there's no ring back here. You see the groove? I took it out. <clears throat> now, I recommend do not take that one out either for another reason. It's, um, God, this is annoying. Um, it's square cut also. Let's see if I can just put everything in my hand and hold it up to the camera. Okay, sorry my display's upside down, it's really messing my head up. So, this is a square cut o-ring. So it is not easy. You could probably put a round one on there and make it work, but 
just leave it. They usually don't, this one doesn't usually get damaged. I never took one apart before, <clears throat> but I did today because I wanted to see. Let me screw this up so you don't have to. Okay, so you need a tiny o-ring to fit under here. I don't know what sizes I picked. I just, I've been, you know, this is a real pain in the butt. <clears throat> Go down to your auto parts store and, and the tiny ones are really hard to find. I have a one of these kits and they're none, there's none in here. They're not small enough. So you have to go find somebody that has them. All right, so you rebuild this valve with an O-ring here. You leave that one alone. And then you slide it back in here. And there's a smooth sealing surface inside here that this O-ring would seal. So it drops in. And it would stick up. Yeah, see it? Oh, wait, there's recess. There's way too far. So it, sits, stick, it sticks up like that. Because remember, that tapered surface on here has to meet this guy. So then, once you've done all that, and I, it's a lot easier said than done, you screw it together, and you don't screw it together tight until you get it on your truck, on your Jeep. <clears throat> you do that, and then you put this guy in with a new fresh O-ring on it also, you drop him in, and Let's see, how did I do this? Um, take a socket and push on it and make sure it goes up and down. You see that? Okay, so what size is this? It doesn't really matter, a quarter inch or smaller. Uh, this is a 732nd quarter inch drive, and it fits perfect. A quarter inch, quarter inch drive would fit perfect there too. But you want to make sure that this thing actuates smoothly. Okay, like that. That's how you know you've probably done it right. The end test is, you know, you take this thing, you back it off like this, um, don't take it apart, and then there's a fresh O-ring that should go here on your hard line or um, on the uh, uh, receiver dryer. There'll be an O-ring on the receiver dryer and you screw this on, rotate the whole thing until this is cinched it up tight against that new o-ring <clears throat> and then you take and put the other hard line in this end rotate this until it's tight up against there let's see is that right ah oh, crap let's see are these always separate if that bottoms out yeah see then this gets tight so uh shit you know i don't remember there's a funny order of getting this thing on and off. So, if I screwed this on to the other hard line tight, it won't rotate to tighten this nut. So, shit. You guys are going to have to figure this out because I'm having too hard of a time. Anyway, um, that's how you rebuild this valve. It, 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 it leaks <clears throat> right through these threads right here. And... Uh, you can't, I couldn't get it at Chrysler, I couldn't find it online, I couldn't find it anywhere. Probably if you did, it's like a $40 valve by now. So I went to the junkyard, got three more in addition to the one that we had that was messed up. Somebody had been in it, screwing it around. One of the ones I got out of the junkyard, somebody had been in it, screwing around. You can tell because the O-rings don't fit or they're chewed up or whatever. So, get spares. They're cheap, they're easy to take off. You need a 5 8 wrench here. No, three quarters inch wrench here, and these hexes out here are uh, five eighths. So you're going to need five eighths for your hard line, five eighths here. Um, so like a crescent and a five eighths, or two five eighths if you got them. Three quarter here and five eighths here. Um, this has some numbers across it. I have no idea what it means. It's a series of fours. Um, I do not know if it has any relevance. Looks like an A here, a series of A's. I think that's probably a manufacturer's mark. Um, I don't know if you can see that. If it even helps at all if you could. So anyway, this one is not rebuilt or anything. This is just a blank. Um, <clears throat> uh, just for an example, here's two that I did today. Um, they're numbered one and two. This one I think has the best chance of sealing. Um, especially that o the O-rings you can't replace and so I marked it one and one 
and this one's two and two, and they're not tight. You don't screw this tight together because then you can't get it on the receiver dryer or the other hard line. So there's, I know this one screws on first. So it either screws onto a hard line or the receiver dryer, and then these two, you just have to figure it out. It's not as easy as it looks. Let's see, if this one goes tight, then this one... Huh. So maybe what happens is you bring this up just snug. No, because then this one won't rotate. So you want to bring it up fairly close so this one can still rotate. Screw this all the way onto the hard line because the hard line isn't going to turn. And then bring this up and cinch it. So it's something like that. Sorry, I'm not out of the vehicle. Um, this project's been going on way too long and I'm getting way too tired. So, um, here's number two, here's number one. I'm going to try these tomorrow after a good night's sleep. And um, hopefully this will help somebody because I rebuilt one a year ago. And so I'm operating from very weak memory. And then the second one in our other XJ, it, it leaks like a sieve. And I use genuine R12 Freon, and it's really expensive to let it leak into the air. In fact, this Jeep, the 88 XJ, leaked a whole, whatever, two and a quarter pounds, leaked the whole thing out. And this was the only leak um, left. We replaced the compressor, hoses, all kinds of stuff, and I killed all those leaks. But um, this was leaking really, really bad. So now it's, it's freshened up. It should work okay. And... Uh, I'll, uh, I'll report more when I get done.